I'd like to just start off with growing up in Venezuela, right? Like, I feel like, you know, we get this kind of message that it was like, I don't know, kind of crazy, you know, kind of deprived um, growing up under, you know, guys like Chavez and Maduro. And, um, you know, you've written quite a bit about this. You actually wrote a tweet and I'm going to read it out. You said, um, crisis in Venezuela was the most difficult experience I could ever live. And the one I promised myself I would never live again. No food in my house, no opportunities, no strong money, no transportation, no electricity, no cell phone, no internet, no water. So I'd like to find out, was it like always like that? It was really hard times that every Venezuelan can relay with my story. Uh, most of us that we left in 2017, 2016, the country. Um, I come from a family that gave me everything they could. And my my father was always the provider in my house. My mom was always the nurturing woman. But, you know, when your purchase of power is declining, lack of things like services start missing because of a government. I live uh, in Venezuela. I was born during Chavez regime in 1998. And I was born 19th of December and he won in December 10th. Since then, my mom always told me that everything changed. The way how the services were taken, the way how even the people mindset was, was thinking, and everything was deteriorating through the time. It was uh, a difficult moment of all of us where we never felt a hope, and the only hope was to get out of the country and to have a better opportunity to start from zero with our families. And most of people of my generation, um, they left without anything, just with the hope to find a good job, send money back to our families, and um, you know, just to forget the 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 past experience, which was um, not having anything when you used to have your family, your friends, and it was an obligation. It was an obligation to leave, and nowadays we see just as a souvenir. Wow. So like these days, is everyone kind of living on the bread line? Like they, they don't have much money or is there still, you know, like in most countries, a separation of, of classes? In Venezuela, um, the salary, the, the, the current salary right now is $4. Before leaving Venezuela, I was earning $10, for example. And that was my motivation to actually leave. The country is in extreme poverty, and there are two bubbles. There is extreme poverty and richness, and the rich people that are the ones that, first of all, they could be connected with the government, or it could be people that actually they they started they had businesses in the past, but they continue and continue with their savings and trying to maintain their businesses. But Venezuela is not from what we heard back in the 80s or back in the 90s. It's completely devastated by that. And there's no young population. And when there's no young population, unfortunately, uh, there's no possibility for a country to survive or to actually accelerate a process of science or technology. So all the youngsters have pretty much left and they are in I don't know other countries around the world. That, that that's that's insane. That there's that's what you say. Like there's almost no hope now because they're gone. But is there this desire to go back at all? Most of us have returned to visit our families, but there's no intention to stay when it's still the electricity, water, any type of service that we can actually find close, like in Brazil, like in Colombia we can have for or for you know the, the type of salary or we can pay for that. So yeah, there are other minority that return and stay, but after two or three years they said no, there's no way that we are gonna be staying here. We need to leave. And that's what's currently happening to people. There's still there's every day um young population, young um adults that decide to leave even in 2024. What can you buy for four dollars? In anything is subsidized. Only what is subsidized now it's water, 
which is something that you mentioned it still arrives once a day in many regions in Venezuela. So the people who live in Venezuela is through allowances. And most of them trying just, or most of them are not having good conditions. And I can speak from these people. I can speak from um, the society that was left, which is the the adults after their 50s or 60s that they try their best to even go to other countries, but they were not having even the skills. They were not developing young skills to be hired and they returned when they have the support of anyone. And that's the population that just left and live in Venezuela. 